Hey guys, welcome to another tips and tricks video for SPAD.next. Um, today we're going to focus on the multi-panel and some of the personal settings that I use. Now keep in mind that these settings are uh, probably not going to be for everybody uh, depending on what type of configuration you have, but a lot of these settings I'm sure a lot of you will like. So I'm going to post uh, um, some online snippets and uh, uh, if anybody wants to use any of these settings, please feel free. I'll also explain how to set these up on your own if you want to set them up on your own from scratch. So first thing I want to show you is I have down on my throttle quadrant here, I got two of them. Um, I use this knob here for trim and these two here are for engines one and two. Now I'm flying a Cessna 172 right now so I'm only going to use engine one. Engine two is not going to be doing anything. Um, over here, this is going to be my prop pitch for uh, any applicable aircraft that allows that functionality. Uh, and that's going to be uh, doing it for both props if it is a dual prop uh, multi-engine aircraft. This is going to be my um, mixture setting. And once again, this will control both mixtures if the aircraft I'm flying happens to have more than one engine. And this is my flap lever here. So I can lower flaps by uh, just extending this here or raising them up to fully uh, retract it. Now the reason why I'm showing this really quick, even though this is a multi-panel video, is because I have the trim setting down here and my flap setting down here, I no longer need to use my flap here and my trim wheel here. I can reassign these to different functions, which is what I did. So for example, I have my setting here to Alt, which is the altimeter, not to the VS, which is your vertical speed. And I'm just going to switch this over here because I accidentally switched to spot view. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so what that means is I can actually change. I've assigned my trim wheel here so I can actually change my vertical speed by doing my trim wheel. So, for example, spinning it down will decrease it by 100. And spinning it up increases it by 100. Now, the reason why this is very, very um, efficient for me is because I can adjust my altitude that I want and I can adjust the vertical speed that I want without having to switch over to vertical speed here. I can just leave it on L to do that. So um, that's I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. I just want to give you a, an idea of what some of my settings are for now. Then I'll show you how to do everything um, at the end of the video. So the other thing I want to show you that I use all the time, and I just love this here. Let me, for example, set my L to, it doesn't matter, uh, 7,400 for now. I'm going to turn on the autopilot and I'm going to turn on the altimeter. Now, all of you will probably notice that the default functionality with Prepared or FSX, when you turn on the autopilot, at least for the 172, is it's going to automatically enable your wing leveler, which will mean if I go to my yoke and I try to turn left or right, it's not going to bank at all because my wing leveler is on, you know, and that just drives me nuts because then I got two choices I can do. I can either go to my heading or course and uh, uh, set the heading I want to go to and then turn on the heading or, or nav that I want to do um, or I can disable um, the wing leveler using control V and uh, I think that's what the command is I haven't used it in such a long time so what I did instead is I actually reprogrammed my VS button here so it'll automatically come on if wing leveler is enabled which is the functionality when you turn on autopilot and to disable it I can just push the, the wing leveler off so I'm using the vertical speed button as the wing leveler. So now that that's off, if you watch, I can turn my yoke and outside you'll see me banking. And same thing with my turn coordinator and uh, AI, you'll see that banking. So, and if I want to uh, wing level myself again, I can once again just go over here, push the VS button, and you'll see, according to my gauges, it's automatically gonna start to level me out here. So my AI is straightening out. You can see in the background, uh, my scenery is straightened out and the turn coordinator is straightening out. So that's, that's one thing that I just love having that functionality because nine times out of 10, if I'm turning on the autopilot, I usually want to disable the wing leveler. So that's uh, something that I really like. Now, while we're on the topic of autopilot, since I have the uh, flaps down here, my flaps lever that I can control down here. Oh, I just hit my trim, that was very nice. Uh, since I have my flaps lever down here, I've actually reassigned uh, my flaps up and down on the, the multi-panel to, on a 172, what it'll do is I'll, if I do flaps down, it'll decrease my altitude setting by 2,000. So if I hit it again, go down by another 2,000. Same thing if I go up, it'll go up by 2,000 each time I hit it. 
So in other words, that what that means is if I'm right down, oh yeah, I have 2,000 set for the minimum, by the way. Uh, so if I'm right down at zero and I want to go to 10,000 really quick, I can just hit this several times to go up, you know. Now that's my setting on the 172. When I'm flying a 737, uh, and I want to set my altimeter to um, from zero to let's say 34,000. It's going to take a lot of clicks to keep going up to 32,000. So um, what I do is I have uh, the increment I believe at 5,000 increments. So every time I hit up, it'll go 5,000 on the uh, on any type of heavy aircraft. You know, mostly I fly 737s if I'm not flying piston aircraft. So that's another uh, uh, cool thing that I have um, going on there. Now the other thing I want to show you. Let's take off. Autopilot for a second, because uh, this is not going to be related to uh, any of the autopilot functions. But what I want to do is I'm going to increase the speed to full, which it already is, and I'm going to do an overspeed on purpose. And what I got is I have my lights that they'll flash an indicator when I go to overspeed. So let me just go over here to my uh, airspeed indicator, and I'm going to go straight down, just so I can get myself past 160 here. Okay, so I passed 160. Now look at all these lights here. They all start blinking, you know. So it's saying emergency, emergency. We got overspeed going on, you know. So that's pretty cool. And then once I go right up and get my speed down, and as you can see, as I'm no longer in overspeed criteria, the lights are no longer flash. Now I also have some something set up for stall too. So let me stall myself, and I should have. Well, it's not working right now. Why is that? see. I should have my nav light flash when I stall. Let me get into a stall here. There we go. Yeah, so anytime I go into a stall, my nav light will flash. So overspeed will have everything flash. Uh, stall has nav light. Now, I can change that to any light that I wanted, or I could have all lights flash on a stall. I just have the nav light for now because I very rarely stall, you know. But uh, I'm a speed demon, so I overspeed all the time. <laughs> okay, now another one I want to show you. This is really good. Um, I've had problems before, my own fault, my own mistake, where I'm flying on VATSIM, and I'll be doing a GPS uh, flight plan, and I get to the last leg of the, uh, um, just approaching my destination airport. And what will happen is ATC will give me, uh, uh, will give me uh, vectors for final, for landing. And a lot of times I'll say, okay, fly this heading and intercept, intercept a localizer and glide slope, and uh, then you fly that from there on. And what happens is sometimes I've accidentally left, I'll show you over here, my uh, nav GPS button on GPS instead of nav. And what will happen is when I go to intercept a localizer, I'm looking at my VOR, and I fly right past it because... Uh, I'm expecting the needle to center, I'm expecting it to come active, or whatever the case, and I fly right past it because I got my damn setting on GPS, you know? And then it's, it's embarrassing because you have to do a go around and all kinds of stuff like that, and you know, it just makes myself look like a fool. And I've done that on VATSIM several times. So what I got is I got a rule set up. I'm gonna go to an active ILS, which is this frequency over here, 110.9. Now, if my setting is on GPS, and the ILS is active, meaning that I'm in range of that particular ILS, I have my nav light flash. And what that will do is I'll give me a warning saying, hey Mike, you know what? Uh, you're in range of the ILS, but your setting is still on GPS. So uh, that reminds me to actually go and set my nav GPS button over to nav instead. And then when I do that, you'll see the VOR become active. So see how on GPS it's not active? And I'm waiting like a dummy to fly past it and everything, waiting for it to come active. Meanwhile, it already is. I just don't have my buttons set correctly. So by pushing that, I can see my glide slope and uh, uh, localizer are active. And once again, of course, once it's off, the nav light goes off. So that's a huge, huge, huge um, time saver for me. So I really like that. Okay, and now another thing that I have too, um, for anything dial related, is I've actually sped up the dials. So by default, especially if you're using the SATEC drivers, if you go to switch your heading or you go to switch your altimeter, it's gonna go up by increments of 100 and it's just gonna take you forever to try to scroll up to uh, the altitude that you wanna to go to. So what I do here is I actually have one turn 
go up 300, so 300 feet for every one turn. And for down, I have it going down 200 feet. The reason being is because if I want to go to, let's say I'm at 10,500 right now, and I want to go to an even 11,000, well, if I have only 300 going up and 300 going down, I'll never be able to reach that 11,000 because what will happen is I'll go to 10.8 and then I'll go to 11.1. So by having three up and two down, what I can do is I can go up, let's say, one more and then down two. And then that will bring me to my 11,000. That way I can get to any altitude, no matter if it's an odd number or even number, just by going up the appropriate amount of clicks and down the appropriate amount of clicks. So that's a really cool thing. And I also have the same thing for, let's say, uh, uh, heading and um, course. So like, for example, one turn will do me three degrees. So what that means is that instead of twisting the thing forever to get to, let's say, 180, I can just do, you know, a few clicks, a few turns, and then we'll back up a bit. And then, you know, I'm there pretty quickly, you know, much better than just, you know, keep going forever and ever. Now, the other cool thing that I have, too, is depending on what my uh, switch is on, like for example, it's on heading right now. Well, you remember how the flaps lever when it was on altitude would increase my altitude by 2000? Well, when I got on heading, for example, um, if I got it, uh, I can use the flaps up or down to um, adjust my heading by 90 degrees. So for example, if I go down, it's gonna decrease the heading right now by 90 degrees. So you see how it's 90? If I push down again, it'll go straight to uh, due north to zero. And then, you know, same thing to 270 and 180 again. And same thing with up. This will increase the heading by 90 degrees, you know. Now, where that's really handy is if I'm flying a heading, let's say I'm flying 360, and I want to turn around to the absolute opposite heading. Like, let's say, um, uh, I don't know, I'm uh, downwind and, uh, well, not downwind because you want to turn base. But let's just say I want to turn backwards, you know, turn uh, uh, to the heading, the reciprocal heading that I'm on. I can just click this twice in either direction, you know, that I'm already on there. And then I can just turn on autopilot, turn on heading, and now it's going to turn me to this specific course, you know. Or I guess you could use this for base if you're on downwind, you know, and you want to turn base, just hit it once. It's going to do a 90 degree turn for you, you know. And if you want to do a 90 degree turn, if it's a right hand traffic banner, then you would just go up. You just go the opposite way, you know. So that's really handy. Same thing with course. Course will do the same thing if I do uh, down or up. It'll decrease or increase my heading by 90 degrees, which is a, a huge um, thing. And um, when I'm flying 737s and a 172, it's not going to make any difference. But in a, in a 737, the IAS, I can increase this dramatically rather than just turning this and taking forever. Well, actually, I got this increased by, what is it, 10 degrees. So it's not too bad. But uh, I can click on this to... Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting to go to 1,000 here. Wait, what did I do here? Uh, I must have had this wrong. Okay, I got to fix that. That's not quite correct. <laughs> That's only supposed to take me up like 50 or something like that. Let me see. Not to 1,000. <laughs> yeah, see, this is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to increment it by 50. But I guess what happened is I was accidentally lower than zero by going down. And that's a mistake. I'm going to have to fix that up in my um, uh, program. And I can do that. That's that's fairly easy. Just got to adjust the range. So make the range from, let's say, 0 to, I don't know, 400 or something like that. So the 990 won't appear there. Okay. So anyways, sorry about that, but I'll fix that. And uh, yeah, that's another thing you could do. So basically, I got the flap lever that will do different things depending on what my switch is set to. You know? Yeah, so um, those are the uh, the features that I have for my particular uh, multi-panel. Now I'll go over to spad.next and I'll show you how to do all this.